as I've been watching The Last of Us, I've been thinking back with a critical eye at The Walking Dead, which I stopped watching sometime after the whole Negan storyline. I think this is a great case study for why I'm not a person who values craft or quality as the end-all be-all measure of an artwork. As I've begun producing videos for YouTube, I've seen many comments along the lines of art as a unique human expression of skill, and I just don't think that that is the most important aspect of what art is. I'm not criticizing if you enjoy craft and quality. I enjoy craft and quality in many areas of life. I don't need it in artwork beyond a certain threshold. With that said, let's take a look at two painting masters, because this will help me demonstrate why I don't value the skill of the artist nearly as much as the other qualities that are embedded or embodied in an artwork. After that, I'll be able to better explain why I think The Last of Us is a better artwork than The Walking Dead. For me, if I'm thinking about skill in painting, the two giants that stand tallest on the horizon are Rembrandt and Sargent. Rembrandt is famously considered the painter of light, and Sargent was sometimes referred to as a monster. I can't find a source for this, but I've heard from painter friends and teachers alike that it's believed that Sargent was able to never make a mistake with his brush. That is, he never had to scrape out a stroke or start over. Regardless of whether the legends are true, both of these painters were masters of their craft, yet led incredibly different lives. Rembrandt died in poverty. Sargent was so well off that he retired from oil portraiture at the early age of 51. Here's the odd thing. Rembrandt, on the one hand, is well known for making nearly 100 self-portraits. In the age of selfies, that is nothing. But imagine making over 40 oil painting portraits, all of them taking months. You would think that someone who looks at their own face would be a narcissist, unable to think of much else than himself. Yet, if you start looking at the portraits closely, there's a depth to them. His younger portraits start off a bit arrogant, but over time, there seems to be an honesty in the eyes in particular. They keep drawing me back to them as Rembrandt seems to be ever mourning something in his eyes. Then if I look to Sargent, his work is mostly funded by the rich upper class of his day. For all his skill, there isn't much depth to the figures. They don't feel like they have survived the ages and hardships of their lives. They feel, well, a bit like flattery. I think the painting of Dr. Pozzi is the most stark example of this. Dr. Pozzi was one of the most attractive and well-known men in Parisian society. He was handsome and commanding and well-known for his various love affairs. On top of that, he was a gynecologist who often performed public examinations. In order to display his skill, he started a League of the Rose, of which he headed. Even though Sargent has much, if not more, of a command of the craft, I can't help but be repulsed. I long for the depth of Rembrandt, who in handling the rich upper class, he treated them like this. This is the famous Night Watch. Nerdwriter has a great breakdown of this painting, and how Rembrandt hides subtle critiques of his subjects while bending the brush to their own narcissism. I imagine most viewers would agree that the honesty of Rembrandt's work is more interesting in the allure of the gynecological Don Juan, even though the brilliant reds and blacks are striking. You see, skill and craft can only get you so far. They are the tip of the iceberg that an artwork can be. That is, they're the very surface of an artwork. You can have the greatest skill, but if you do not apply that skill towards something deeper, it will still remain thin. Sargent himself, at age 51, stopped making oil paintings, saying in a letter to a friend, I abhor and abjure them, and hope to never do another, especially of the upper classes. He did not completely stop making portraits, but he switched to charcoal portraits, which he could finish within a few hours. Personally, I think his watercolors of Venice and his paintings of dancers are his best and deepest work. But how do you turn down the ferocious hunger for his skill when the rich come with purses and wallets open? Rembrandt, on the other hand, was searching for something. I think he was after the mysterious depth that is in the eyes of every person. His portraits are some of the most looked at works of art ever, and yet they are, on the surface, just selfies. There's clearly more there. The eyes draw us in and make us wonder as he ages. What sort of narcissist would paint himself in such poor condition? How many authors keep using their young headshot on the back of book jackets rather than updating it 
with each passing year. Rembrandt seems to allow us a different sort of experience of him. He seems to open himself up to his own gaze, wondering, what have I become? John Singer Sargent asks himself what he has become after he looks time and time again at his work plied with his skill and for what? For the vapid flattery of an aristocratic Europe. Clearly, the skills of an artist must serve something beyond showing off exactly what they are. Which brings me to The Walking Dead and The Last of Us. As we have come to expect, really since the first season of The Walking Dead, both are extremely well done television shows. Obviously there are technical issues here and there, especially with a show as long running as The Walking Dead. Those things really do not matter as much. If I'm right about Sargent, then the polish of the production will only get you so far. Clearly, such a popular show has some depth. As for The Last of Us, I have to admit that I'm making this call early. The first season is not done yet, and I do not know the video game at all, speaking as a viewer of these shows only. Similarly, The Walking Dead lost my attention some time ago, and I'm not returned. I do not believe that my lack of complete viewership invalidates my point. Rather, I think it proves it. So what is my point? The Walking Dead ultimately explores the question, what makes us better than the walkers, or zombies? As in, who is really dead? Who are the Walking Dead? The entire show quickly and realistically demonstrates that the real dangers and the real monsters are not the zombies, but the people who have survived. Rick Grimes slowly becomes more and more of a monster in order to save his family, which he ultimately fails to do. I find this a very compelling narrative that reflects the realities of our world. Yet, it goes a bit too far. The Walking Dead ultimately demonstrates over and over how love and grace have no place in the world. This is why everyone becomes a zombie when they die, rather than just those who are bitten. It makes the claim that we are all, ultimately, in the end, monsters. I don't think this is true. I've seen love and grace and the amazing sacrifices that humans make. I got tired of The Walking Dead because there was never any hope or redemption, just the continual slide into deeper and deeper depravity. Rick becomes more grimy, and that feels rather thin to me. So what is The Last of Us doing differently? The Last of Us is ultimately exploring the question, when everything of society is wiped away, what is the last bit of us that remains? As in, what is at the core of a human? The last part of us. Of course, the show displays desperation and selfish ambition and corruption, but that does not seem to be the main focus. In The Last of Us, we have Joel, a man who's lost his family, searching for his brother, who watches his quote-unquote wife die and still takes on the fatherly role to protect Ellie, albeit with a bit of hesitation. The show highlights how love and grace is the only thing really worth living for. At least, that is what it shows so far. The girl who might be the cure to this parasitic fungus needs a protector. He doesn't know what to do, but they set out to find his brother, and hope for the best. Joel and Ellie encounter both those who reject the barbarism of humanity and those who embrace the barbarism of humanity as society falls. So far in the series, no one has been punished for showing love. Love has not been displayed as a weakness. It's rather odd for a story about the end of society. This is not a world of betrayers, but rather people who rise to the occasion and find redemption, even if it is through fire. The biggest betrayer so far finds that his selfishness was pointless and he kills himself. All in all, it's a deep show. It does not hide the fact that humans are monsters, but it also acknowledges that the last of us, the last part that really matters, that makes life worth living, is our love. Joel is not becoming more grimy, he's becoming more human while showing Ellie the truth of life and death. I can't help but wonder if this is because it was a video game. Would players stick with a story that made them feel worse and worse? Or would they like to play the role of a hero? I will be exploring the nature of video games as art in a future video. But for now, I wonder, since it's not the quality of these shows that draws me into one over the other, but instead the depth of the reality, the manner in which they show the human condition, and in fact, the bit of hope. Is that the same thing I'm seeing in Rembrandt? When I see Rembrandt wondering near the end of his life, is his visage worth the oil? And the canvas? Is there hope for the washed up, for the old, for the beaten down? Maybe I'm just a dreamer to say, I certainly hope so. One last detail for the last of us who stuck it out this far. Joel is a unique name. It's an Old Testament name that means Yahweh is God. The Bible, whatever you think of it, 
proclaims that God is love. Is it at all surprising that the man whose name proclaims a God of love is finding out how love is life-giving?